Uh, hey everybody, my name is David with Media Unlocked and uh, today we are going to be talking with Paul Church, a uh, product developer and I guess you, you pretty much started the, the company um, and we're going to be talking about the, uh, the T-Set um, and I guess the name of your guy's company is it A-X-S-Y, does that stand for something? Uh, yeah, Axie. Uh, okay, it's Axie, that's okay. Like, uh, so, Axie, Axie, yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, so he's Paul here is uh, he's pretty much helped start the company. He's a, a product developer for the company, and uh, and they've come up with a product called the T-Set, which is a motion control or motorized slider that allows you to do things that right now in the market you, you just don't have. It's not out there yet. Um, mm -hmm. but they're bringing something new to the photography um, and videography game that hasn't been seen and I came across it a few weeks ago guys and uh, I, I just like this is this is an amazing product that you guys are, are, are bringing to the market here in the next you know couple months yeah thank you thank you um, so I'll let you kind of explain you know kind of dive into the T set a little bit and then we'll kind of break it down and ask some specific questions about it so yeah sure um, yeah just say first of all yeah thank you for having us on the interview That's Thank you for taking the time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if I go into a little bit about the T-Set, I mean, just to start, T-Set is like tri-axis set. So it's a free axis motion control set. Um, it's made up of, I mean, it's three different devices. Um, so you have the centric. It's like a central controller, which can be used completely separately if you just want camera control. Uh, and then uh, the next device is Spin, which is a, a smart, smart motor, which is wirelessly communicates with Centric. Um, yeah, you can do some pretty crazy stuff with that. We can talk about that later. Um, and then a slide, which is just an a extremely smooth, strong manual slider. And when they're all put together, then you get a, a free axis motion control set. So for video, stop motion, time lapse, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do with it. Um, yeah, I don't, should I go into more detail about the different devices? Yeah, or? You, could, you could explain a little bit more about it if you like. Um, pulling up a, the kind of the, the, I guess, picture off one of their videos here, if you guys can see it, so you get an idea of, uh, of what it looks like here, guys. Um, um, but yeah, if, if yeah, if you want to go into a little more detail, please, I mean, please do yeah, so. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, so more information about this, the better, because there is, like you said, only so much information out there, because there's only so yeah. much information you guys can write the text. So yeah, there's a lot, lot to go into. Um, so yeah, everything is controlled um, through a smartphone app, uh, which will be available on Android and iOS. And <clears throat> the reason why the reason why we did this is because normally with uh, a controller for equipment like this, it it takes a, a huge amount of effort to design, like produce a product that has a relatively small amount of processor power, processing power, whereas a smartphone has is essentially a, a supercomputer. So once you you know once you can connect to all devices through the smartphone app, you just have a like almost an endless amount of capabilities. So that's kind of the, the reason why we went into that direction. Um, yeah. So. Uh, for the slide, for example, if I just go into a few specs, then people can, can get an idea of the, the, the different products. Uh, slide um, only weighs about 1.5 kilos, but supports a, a payload of 30 in, ho in uh, horizontal orientation. And spin is able to, uh, only weighs about 1 kilo and is able to um, handle a payload of 20 kilos when panning. Uh, and 10 kilos uh, in a tilt orientation. And, and spin can be used in any orientation. So if you have one spin device, you can use it for panning or tilting. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you're completely free uh, how you use any of the devices. Uh, yeah, so and this will fit. <coughs> yeah, go, go ahead, David. Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, just kind of wanted to uh, dive into the what it can fit. I mean, this can fit, so this can fit most of your modern day cameras. I mean, this can fit a red. Um, yeah. And, and be able to handle the size, which again, uh, there isn't a lot of motorized or motion control sliders out there that can take. I mean, that's a heavier payload. I mean, you throw mm -hmm. a lens on there with a, with a red scarlet. Um, you know, it, there isn't there isn't very many of them, or at this price range, that it's going to be at. We'll talk about that a little bit later, guys. 
um, there isn't anything um, that really offers you that option. On top of that, that it's going to be able to move this way and get, get shots that um, mm -hmm. had it before aren't, wasn't really an option. Yeah, I mean, the trick is, this is like what kind of differentiates us between some of the competing products, is that most of uh, the pan tilt head devices, or, or often they are unbalanced. It means that the, you cannot put the payload on the, the central point of the axis that is turning around. So when you can balance it like you can with the spin, it means that it can, uh, like, yeah, it can handle a lot higher weights than uh, an unbalanced system would be able to handle. So uh, I guess the next question I had for you is what, what was kind of your guys' motivation? I mean, why did you guys just wake up one day and be like, okay, did you guys need something that could take us take shots like this, and you're like, there's nothing on there, we need to make this so we can get what we need, or did you just see a gap in, in technology as far as like what other people are trying to get, but they weren't being able to, to accomplish it? But kind of what was your guys' motivation for getting together and putting this together? Yeah, so, I mean, we were really like heavily into time lapse. I mean, as enthusiasts, not as we, didn't, we weren't producing any professional video, but uh, in the enthusiast kind of market of equipment, it's, it, was, it's, it is and was essentially unaffordable to get any professional motion control tools. It's just out of the price range of a normal, normal person. Um, so we were kind of like progressing our skill and try, trying out new equipment and stuff, and then we realized that <laughs> yeah, you, can, you just can't afford um, anything that could do the kind of features that you would want to do. Uh, so we started developing, I mean, first of all, we started kind of quite simple, just the same features as other competing products. Um, and then we realized you can actually do a lot, lot more. Um, so, yeah. I mean, for example, the cost of uh, really high-quality video cameras, I mean, we were talking about this earlier, has come down like a crazy amount in the last three or four years. I mean, if yeah. you think the Blackmagic cinema cameras, like you were saying, the T3i, the GH2, GH3, GH4. Um, yeah, the, it's completely within the budget of a normal person to be able to afford what five years ago was cinema quality, quality video. But this hasn't really happened for the accessories or the other professional tools that people are using. So, yeah, I mean, we feel that there is a huge market out there of people that can't afford professional filmmaking tools like this. So we're trying to, yeah, bring it into people's budgets, basically. Which uh, is great, uh, yeah. because uh, there are motorized sliders that you can pick up for, you know, four or five hundred USD, mm -hmm. but the options that you guys are offering with your motion control slider, uh, I, don't, I don't even know if there's anything on the market that isn't probably under, you know, over 10,000, maybe. I mean, this... The, yeah, pretty that, much. And certain functions that you're going to have on this, I don't even know if it's on the market, period. Like, I don't even know if some of the professional filmmakers even have some of the options you're going to be offering mm -hmm. uh, with this, with the app, the things that the app will be able to do. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, uh, so let's kind of dive into the uh, next question here. I guess let's let's talk a little bit about what what options there are with the app. Um, you know, I am a huge time-lapse photography enthusiast. I've, uh, mm -hmm. spent, I have books that I've bought that I've read. I've watched about every video on YouTube that I can find that has any uh, solid information on how to get professional, how to make and take professional time-lapse photography. Um, mm -hmm. One of those things being the option to, um, that make really, a really nice time-lapse uh, is, is the motion, being able to move with maybe a sunrise or the moon coming in, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know before it's very static. I mean, you can move left to right, but you've never been able to go up and down with it. Um, and you guys actually with the app have a an option that can connect in and get the Earth's movement and set points so that the camera will actually move at certain points during your shot, um, so that you can actually get these amazing shots. So. Uh, I guess kind of dive into a little bit about what the app actually offers, and uh, and then you can kind of go into a little bit more detail on top of that with different types of scenarios uh, that the app can really help you out with. Yeah, sure. 
Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, it will be available for Android and iOS initially. We, I mean, we may think about adding Windows Phone if we get enough support from people or requests from people. Um, but yeah, so the basic functionality is, I, don't, I mean, if you've, uh, people have seen the video, you, you have a home screen and you can choose the different modes. So it's very simple, you just select, for example, stop motion mode, uh, and then it, everything you do will apply to this mode. And then along the bottom of the, the, the app display is a simple, like, one-dimensional uh, keyframing. So you can just set, like, for example, start here, and then by, let's say, the middle of the motion be at a different position, and then by the end of the motion be at this position. Um, and this is for if you don't want to go too deeply into, like, really complicated stuff, it's just make sure every device is at a certain position at a certain time with no special curves or uh, smoothing or anything like that. And then if you really want to go <coughs> into more in-depth uh, motions, you just swipe up and you get a full keyframing, uh, yeah, full keyframing system with Bezier curves. So you can set up, I mean, we, we haven't gone into, <laughs> we, yeah, we haven't gone anywhere near how complex you can get into it, but you can add, for example, like, 100 or 200 different keyframes um, of each completely different for each device. Uh, I mean, it takes planning, but yeah, you could create a motion that could last an extremely long time. And yeah, I mean, at the moment, there is no equipment that can do this. I don't, as far as I'm aware, I don't think there's any equipment that you can connect wirelessly and set up an extremely complicated motion. Um, with, with the astrophotography uh, mode, at first, we're going to um, release an equatorial mount, which essentially is, allows you to mount one spin device at the same axis as the Earth. So when you put it in this mode, this, the spin just turns at one rotation per day, and it just cancels out any motion blur that you get from the Earth's rotation, which is the, it's the number one problem if you're doing astrophotography. Is that you know if you do like a, a star lapse and you take a thirty second exposure, you get the the stars start to blur in the sky, um, and this cancels that out. So you could use a zoom lens and take a photo of I don't know Jupiter, for example. Um, yeah, and you would have a sharp image, even if you made like a three minute or four minute or twenty minute exposure. Um, yeah, and then later on we're gonna uh, add more functionality, so you can actually with a a free axis. Uh, system, you could target certain points in the sky uh, using the app. So that because smartphones have so many sensors, it, you can know where you are and what direction it's pointing. So you could actually just say, go to, for example, Andromeda Galaxy, and it will go there. Um, yeah. So it has like uh, uh, sorry to cut you off, but so you're saying mainly yeah. with my smartphone, it's got kind of like a it can utilize my GPS with your guys application. Therefore. Um, giving me information I need to get certain uh, astrophotography uh, pictures or time lapses. Yeah, I mean, essentially, your smartphone knows where it is on the, right. in the world and at what kind of rotational position it is. Uh, in. And you can use this information to get extremely accurate positional data for the equipment. Um, right. Yeah, so the, the way it works is that you, people may have noticed on the images of the centric, what you do is that there's a clip on, on the top of it, and you just slot your smartphone in and press calibrate. This is just for tracking features. You, you slot your smartphone in, and you press calibrate, and it will do some kind of magic in the back end. Essentially, it um, wobbles around the devices a small amount to get the positioning information. Uh, and then from there, then, then all the devices always know where they are unless you change your setup. So, for example, you uh, change the angle of the slider or something like that. Um, that's yeah. amazing. That's really, <laughs> really amazing. Uh, as I, it's going to change. Like I said, smart, smartphones are like supercomputers. So right. it's, it's strange that this functionality or functionality like this hasn't been brought up before. I think. Well, I've had the idea. I think a lot of people have, but just no one's acted on it except for you guys. So good <laughs> on. <laughs> um. um yeah, I was just yeah. Let me think if there's something else I can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah because that, that just I feel like that you just kind of touched on the app right there, and that was a specific. Yeah, that, yeah. I did quickly go over those modes. 
Um, yeah, so for example, uh, the calibration, I go into a little bit more detail about that, yeah. is uh, if you want tracking for, for example, visual effects, uh, you, when you set all your equipment up, like physically, you then go to the calibration menu and you can set your end point, so set the end point of each rail and if there's any blocking point when you're, let's say, doing a, a tilt so that your uh, lens or camera doesn't crash into the other devices. Uh, and, then, and then from there, you're, the devices know where they are. Um, yeah. Uh, <coughs> and after you've done that, then you, you are able to export the data because the devices will always know exactly where they are to within fractions of a degree and fractions of a millimeter. You can then export that data and then use that data within a visual effects program. Yeah, for example, Cinema 4D, Blender, um, and yeah, there's, I'm sure there's lots of crazy applications for this. Um, yeah, this is something we really want the community to help us with because we can't think of all the things that this could be used for. So we're, we're happy to work with people, um, yeah, finding out what can be done with it because I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some awesome stuff that could come out of that. Well, it's open source, so people... You yeah, it's open source as well. Yeah. People will be able to uh, help you develop um, applications within the app. Yeah, all the devices are um, yeah, Arduino compatible. So if you can program for Arduino, then you can program for our devices as well. I um, mean, we'll be uh, writing the firmware so that it's as easy to understand as possible. Everything will be commented. And, yeah, people, are, we, we will be encouraging people to... Um, you know, develop new and weird things that we haven't thought of yet. So, yeah, that's something also. And they will. People will be out there. They'll figure some stuff out. Yeah. Um, so with the app, I guess another question I had is um, mm -hmm. with the app and the device, why actually be able to change the settings um, wirelessly? Like, you know, my Canon, why be able to change mm -hmm. my ISO and shutter speed? Mm -hmm. um, or with other, other cameras, why have that option? Yeah, so the, the Centric has a has two micro USB connections. One is for charging, and the other is for a PTP. I don't know if you know what PTP connection is. Um, it allows you to connect with a micro USB cable to, to your camera. Um, and from there, you can therefore access certain settings on your camera. At the moment, just because of the way PTP works, you have to just go through each camera individually and add support for it. So we, we're constantly updating and adding support for more and more cameras. Um, I mean, every camera will work with, uh, that ha you know, that has a normal shutter release cable connection. That will work perfectly, um, and you can change the exposure time. But for changing the settings in your camera, you need <clears throat> to have this PTP connection, and, yeah, uh, we're, we're trying to cover as many cameras as possible. Uh, so you guys are, I guess, working on the most popular models, like your major Canons and Nikon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the main mo we support most of the Canon and Nikon cameras, um, but yeah, like I said, we we're just going through and adding support for each and every camera. Um, so by the time the the devices are actually released, we'll have a much much larger list of uh, the cameras that we support. Okay. Um, another thing, I guess we could kind of dive into, uh, you know, some CG or 3D. I know you kind of touch base, but yeah. you know, being able to do motion tracking and compositing with this, um, you know, it's not something I'm an expert at. I kind of understand the basics, but could you kind of explain how the device and the app would work um, for special CG 3D kind of compositing um, shots? You know, taking multiple shots, getting that same exact shot. Yeah, sure. So. Um, I mean, there's a few different ways that you can use the system to, to, to do visual effect shots. Um, the, the simplest way is just using repeatable motion. Uh, for that, you don't need any tracking data. You're just doing the same shot, but with the same motion. And the motion, could, for example, could be applied over a different speed, or it could be applied in reverse. Um, yeah, so, or you could, for example, make a video, make a time so with the same motion, and then you can mix the two images together. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail how you do this. It's relatively easy in, for example, a program like After Effects or uh, you know, Adobe Premiere. Um, yeah, so that, that's the simplest visual effects application. Um, but yeah, more complex stuff is like I talked about. You actually need the tracking data, uh, which as soon as you've done this calibration, um, 
part of the after you set up the devices, you'll then be able to like save, uh, load, and export. Yeah, the, any any motion data that you can make the equipment do, you can then export that as a file. So um, we we're, we're looking at different ways to export it. It may just be saved to your device, or you can maybe just email it um, to yourself. Uh, that's something we're still looking into. Um, and then you'll be able to import that data into a yeah a visual effects software. Um, yeah, and again, we really appreciate people's input on this, so we can make this as, as simple and uh, as effective as possible. When yeah, for the for the visual effects artists. Yeah, I can't wait to see what some of the people do uh, with this option um, in their app and being able to people that, that actually know how to do CG and 3D work uh, proficiently. So I think it would be pretty cool to see what they'll be able to do with it. Um, so I guess another big question I think a lot of people are going to have about um, the most controlled device is mm -hmm. the battery life. You know, I'm I'm you know I'm well, sometimes I hike as much as as five or six miles to get to the shot I want to of the stars or the specific time lapse. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm interested to know, you know, what's the battery life on this device um, for taking pictures and stuff? Yeah, sure. So battery life is a kind of difficult question to answer because it's obviously highly dependent on how you use the device. Right. Um, but I mean, the best way I found to explain the battery life is to say how many rotations the for, for spin, how many rotations it can do uh, on, on one full charge. And that uh, at the moment, we've got about 200 out of it. We're obviously, this is true of any of the specs I've, I've given you. Uh, we're working on improving all of them. But at the moment, um, we're able to get about 200 free, full 360-degree rotations out of spin. Um, and that's enough, for, for example, on the slider, that's about 40 meters of travel. Um, yeah, uh, but the the batteries can be recharged while they're in use. So, for example, you can get a really low cost external battery that used, for example, for uh, recharging a phone or, or something like that. Um, you can just, if you need that extra uh, power, you can yeah just get a low cost external battery and connect that up. Or, for example, connect it to your car. Uh, I mean, it uses a standard 12 volt um, DC jack connection. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really inexpensive and easy to make sure it's always charged. Uh, and for Centric, it lasts about about two days. Again, that's it's highly dependent on how how you use the devices. So uh, is the is the battery interchangeable at all, or is it in the device? So, yeah, it's, it's not uh, it's not particularly easy to change. I mean, it's been designed so it's relatively environmentally friend, friendly in, in that it's not like it's it's not soldered into the device or anything. You can replace it. You need to un like completely undo the device and then right. replace the battery in there. Uh, I mean, we're looking at what the you know the legal aspects are of allowing people to just purchase a new battery and put it in themselves. But yeah, there could be some complication. I don't know what the legal side of things are for you know allowing people to undo electronics and add batteries. Right. <laughs> yeah. But there are different devices that 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 can be carried that aren't that heavy that you could use. To power or recharge the device while you're where you're going, especially yeah, if yeah, you're these these bigger hikes where I'm going four or five miles out to get a time lapse. I usually got a mm -hmm. buddy with me, and so I carry all the time lapse equipment, and they'll carry you know the the camping equipment. So mm -hmm. therefore, I can carry quite a bit of equipment. Now, far as um, size wise, how much? I guess it breaks down to the it breaks down to two or three different pieces. Um, how, how far down does the rail system break down within the device? No, no, no. It, I mean, it breaks down to more pieces than that. Um, okay. So, I mean, each spin device is just one one piece, and that's uh, about roughly 100 by 100 millimeters by, uh, I think it's 100, uh, yeah, 110. So it's roughly a, a 10 centimeter cube, uh, and the rails are made up of four 50 centimeter length rail, so yeah, that's the maximum, that's the biggest dimension, is the 50 centimeter rail. Uh, and yeah, the, the rails completely come apart, so there's two, two M pieces, then the four rails, and then the, the mid-section connector. So this is like a, an extra support where you can also mount uh, the a tripod in, in the center or, or at the end. Um, but in total, we can all pack down into a space of around 500 by 100 by 100. 
Uh, wow, so you could really break it down a lot. Um, yeah, it's actually really small. I mean, it's easy to fit in a backpack and still have other camera gear in like a normal size rucksack. Um, which is huge because uh, <laughs> a lot of the other devices, uh, motion control devices like this, the rails don't really break down. I mean, you've got rails sticking out of the back of your backpack um, while the other, some of the other smaller pieces will break down. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things we noticed in development is that when you... Generally, some of the nicest time lapse places or video, video places for video are in the kind of most remote, difficult to get to, and a weird location. So, if you have a device that weighs, I don't know, 20, 30 kilos, uh, and is over a meter long, uh, it's, it, you you either can't take it to that to the to these locations, or you you just don't want to. Like you don't want to before you go out and uh, go to like a nice shooting location, you don't want to have to be annoyed. You have to carry around this like enormous heavy equipment. Uh, oh, so that yeah. was like a really important point for us. As, as it should be. I mean, that for me, yeah. that's another another aspect of this that I'm really excited about because, uh, like, like you said, they're just, it just there aren't any that really break down far enough. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, but it, like a lot of the time, you may only need one axis, so you can just grab one spin, which, is, like I said, just a, uh, a ten centimeter cube, uh, and you can just put that in any camera bag, and you've got yeah, an, a, a motion axis with you in a like a really tiny package. So yeah, that's actually one of the things I I love most about the, about the equipment. So I guess have you had a lot of fun playing around with it? Uh, I've seen some of the time lapses you guys have uh, have done. I guess you guys went to like a ski resort. And did did some time lapses. Yeah, I mean that's taken from all around the world. Like one one of the shots is from Kyrgyzstan, uh, and that's probably the most remote location. Um, yeah, we're we're trying to test it kind of everywhere at the moment. Um, anywhere we can get to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a, a time lapse is a really fun. Uh, how should I say? I mean, you can call time lapse art. I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. There's there's so many different variations of time lapse uh, mm -hmm. and types, and uh, I mean, I'd rather yeah, there's just something to be said about watching a time lapse versus shooting it just straight video. You know, um, yeah. Just there's some kind of aesthetic beauty to it that just can't be captured any other way. Also, what I love, yeah, just to go kind of off on a tangent a little bit. Um, um, what I love about time lapse is that. It's sometimes you you just you just have to be lucky. Like you, you I mean, there's a uh, one I've been trying to get. I, I think I'm on the fifth attempt now. Uh, <laughs> just because, yeah, you, you just you can have be as skilled as you like, but sometimes you just need that bit of luck, and that, that that's what kind of makes it. I think for me, that time lapse is yeah, is <laughs> uh, an art that is. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. No, I understand what you're saying. So, is there any other uh, things you'd like to talk about about you know that you haven't already mentioned or talked about so far about the uh, motion controlled slider device? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, one of the things I didn't cover was that um, Spin is actually. I, I think this is the only equipment that has this. Spin is actually uh, waterproof. So we're, we're trying to get it at IP67 rating, which is, means that literally you can hold it under water and it'll, it'll be fine. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's been something that's been pretty hard to develop for, but uh, we felt it was important because this is kind of go, going back to the re remote location thing, is that time lapses often happen yeah, in, in really harsh, like best time lapses, uh, in really harsh environments. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we really wanted to push for that. So yeah, we we haven't actually attempted a fully underwater time lapse yet, but I think we're gonna have to get a GoPro and give that give that a try. That uh, it sounds awesome. Like, uh, <laughs> oh my god! So I went to uh, Guam a few years back, and some of the most beautiful coral reefs I've ever seen, with all types of fish and turtles, and like mm -hmm. oh my god, I could only imagine being able to take a time lapse and you know down on one of the reefs. That would just be amazing. Yeah, I think actually my favorite time lapse I've ever seen was uh, you maybe have seen. It, I think it's called Slow Life. Uh, guy did a just a just a thing. It's just a coral and stuff like that. It's just a st it doesn't look real. It's just absolutely stunning. But if you imagine adding some motion to that, that could be yeah, mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's really the best highlights I've ever seen. So how is the? So you're saying you almost you're almost there to the point where you you believe it is uh, at almost at that waterproof. Uh, you know how far how far along are you with with getting that developed? Yeah, so the problem at the moment is that we we're using uh, I mean high resolution but three D printed three D printed enclosures, so we're not at the point of having pre production enclosures at the moment. Uh, I mean the the machines all the metal parts are are essentially pre production quality. Um, but yeah, the 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 enclosure is uh, 3D printed, so you don't get the same quality as it as when it's actually properly manufactured with plastic injection molding. So uh, the tol tolerance is required for waterproofing is actually <laughs> obviously I guess you can understand is actually quite difficult. But at the moment, all our tests are extremely promising. Um, yeah. So as soon as we 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 have that, we're we're gonna be yeah, making some extremely interesting videos uh, with the waterproofing. Reason. Yeah, um, just another thing to add to the device that, again, I don't think anybody else is offering. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anybody's ever really even thought of it or taken it serious. They may have thought of it, but never really, you know, taken the next step to try. Yeah, to it's, it. it's quite difficult. I'm not gonna lie, making a, a motor waterproof is actually quite a difficult challenge. <laughs> I have faith you guys can do it, and fingers crossed, because this is something I'd like to see. <laughs> yeah, we're looking forward to getting getting these devices out there. Um, so I guess you know if it gets funded, uh, what is you know far as purchasing it, um, you know what's the one? I guess we've got what 14 days left on the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and guys, if you haven't checked out their Kickstarter campaign yet. Um, I got a link down below in the description bar. Go click on it. You can read up on the device a little bit more. Um, if you, I'm sure there's some stuff that we haven't covered today that's you know on their Kickstarter page, and you guys can watch some videos and get an up close look at the actual device. Um, and I've got their web or their Kickstarter pulled up here, and I'm kind of showing a little uh, a video that they have of the actual device. Um, mm -hmm. But so if it you know if it gets funded in the next 14 days. One, how far do you guys think, or how long do you think it's going to be before you guys can start rolling these out? And two, um, have you guys contacted? Are you guys going to have any distributors, or is everything going to be ordered through the website? You know, what's going to be the process in acquiring one of these? Um, you know, I guess once it gets, I mean, it's going to get. I think it's going to get funded. So you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. So I mean, we're we're trend. I think you can uh, use these trending websites to see roughly where where it, it looks like it's going, and we're trending to about I think forty six thousand pounds. At the moment, so that's well above our, our goal. So that, I mean, that looks pretty certain, I'd say. Um, yeah. So the first people that will get the devices is obviously the, our Kickstarter backers, um, and th that should be. We, we intend to start shipping in July. Uh, production will be in uh, May and June. Uh, so yeah, shipping in July for the for the Kickstarter backers, um, and <clears throat> after that, the, the, all the devices will be for sale. On our shop, on our website, on our web shop, uh, and not, not only that, we're we're trying to get distributors like around the world. Uh, so we've been in contact with a couple of different distributors. Uh, yeah, so it won't just be available on our website; it'll be available um, in multiple countries. Uh, for, so yeah, you're for, open yeah. sometime in July or August. Uh, you know, I'm guessing that initial run. It's going to take some time because you guys have quite a few backers um, that looks like you know that are going to get the device. Um, yeah, I mean we want to we want to be careful that uh, all the first devices are like really strictly tested in each individually, so that every every person's device is like absolutely the perfect quality. And then the second production run will start to speed things up a bit um, and automate many of the processes, uh, the production processes. Um, yeah, so. Man, I can't wait. So, uh, <laughs> so we're looking at you know in August, maybe a little bit later time frame, and you guys will be able to get uh, a motion controlled device, uh, slider device that, well, just the the amount of info, the amount of things you can do with it, uh, we have yet to even really touch on, especially with this app that they're going to have. Um, and you'll be able to buy different parts. You won't have to buy the whole entire set. You'll be able to buy different. No, parts exactly. Depending on what you need. Yeah, if you want, you can just have one centric. If you just want camera control, and you can always upgrade to, you know, an extra one, two, three axes, axes at, at any any time you like. There's no problem in that. And I'm sure there'll be other parts that you guys will add down the line um, where people. Yeah, I mean, I think in the next week, 
in the next week we're going to do an update on some of the extras that people can add. So there's some, yeah, there's some interesting but really low cost affordable upgrades that you can uh, add to the devices that will add, like allow even more functionality. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I'll leave that. I'll leave that for the update. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, well, is there? I guess kind of wrapping up the interview here. Is there any other? Uh, I guess other things you want to talk about, you know, that I haven't already asked you, because um, I'm sure there's a million other questions I could probably ask you, um, and I could probably pick your brain all night about the device, <laughs> but I don't <laughs> want it to run for too long. But yeah, if there's anything else that you want to talk about, um, you know, uh, no, I think I, think I covered it. I mean, again, yeah, the, there's such a lot of tiny little details, um, but yeah, I think I've covered a, a lot of the. The, the general stuff about the product. Right. Uh, I think people need to know. I mean, the, like we said earlier, it's really difficult to get across all of the different things that, that it can do. So uh, hopefully I've done a good job <laughs> of that tonight. All right. Well, Paul, I really appreciate you taking the time to jump on Media Unlocked with us and and tell us a little bit about your device. Um, again, yeah, guys... Uh, description bar down below. There's a there's a link to their their Kickstarter. If you're watching it live, or you're just you just happen to be watching this well after the interview, uh, please go check it out and and help support this because uh, I really think this is well worth your time and money. Um, and I mean this as as we've talked, there's there's just nothing else like it. And uh, there's a little bit more information um, on top of what we talked about today on their Kickstarter and their website. And uh, all that, you know, is, there's a link down below for the Kickstarter. So, uh, Paul, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. And, uh, well, I guess, you know, where you're at is quite late now. Um, so it's still mid-afternoon for me, but. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty late. That's all good. I've really enjoyed talking, talking with you, David. Thank, thank yeah. you very much for, you know, giving us a bit of time to cover, cover our products and stuff. And let me see, has anybody got any questions, I guess, out there that's viewing it, uh, you know, before we jump off? Um, if you've got any questions, guys, this would be the time to ask them. If you've got any questions for Paul. Also, I mean, even after the, the interview, people are welcome to ask us any questions on the Kickstarter campaign or on, on our Twitter, for example, Axie Tech. Um, yeah. We're, we're always open to input, questions, feedback. Yeah. All right, and I'll add, I'll add in uh, their Twitter and stuff, guys, in the description after this is done, so you guys can just click on over and uh, and follow them. And uh, I'll add their. You guys got Facebook as well, so we'll add the Facebook in there in the description. And uh, I mean, that's actually how I think I contacted you guys was through Facebook. So I, I had a question and they answered it. Yeah. Uh, we're pretty, we're pretty good at that. We respond really quickly to everything. So, yeah. Any questions out there before we finish this up, guys? All right. Well, I guess we are uh, we're done. So, Paul, thanks again. 